What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. Ever since the series inception, ROM hacks have played a huge part in Pokemon's culture. Hundreds of different games have been released, some good and some not so good. However, there is one game that stands out more than the rest. Today we're going to take a look at Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal Version. To a large majority of people watching, you're probably saying, what's the big deal, it's just Pokemon Crystal translated to Vietnamese, right? In a sense, yes, you're correct. But there's a lot more to this than you think. Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal has quite a backstory to it. Although this game is considered a ROM hack, it doesn't meet the standards or attributes of a lot of other Pokemon ROM hacks like Pokemon Ash Grey and Pokemon Glazed. This game is literally just Pokemon Crystal. From what I've gathered about this game, it was just a translated ROM that was printed onto carts and sold through Vietnamese markets. The only issue is that this game was translated not once, but twice. Supposedly, the game was translated from Japanese to probably Chinese and then translated to English. Because of how different the sentence structure is between all of these languages, the game is in severely broken English. How broken, you say? Well, rather than explain it, let's do a quick run through the game and we'll see. Okay, so when we start the game, everything looks the same as the original version. When you get to the new game and options menu, they're now start and change. Not completely right, but we'll go with it. It then asks you if you're a boy or a girl. Or... Gur. Let's go with Gur. Welcome, it's Elf's World? Oh, Elf's World, of course, how could I forget? Come to find out, the Chinese term for Pokemon translates to Elf. One of the funny parts out of this whole ROM is the fact that some sentences are actually correct. Like when you're changing the time, it will ask you perfectly for the minute number on your clock. Professor Oak then commands you to go to the Elf's World. I like to note that Professor Oak isn't really Professor Oak. He likes to be called by his nickname. Elf Monster. Great. Elves here are called Monster. They existed everywhere. Oh, that's so sad. What happened to them? Alright, let's choose our name. Something interesting to note here is that unlike the English version of the game, we only have space for 5 characters rather than 10. We'll see a lot more of this later. And while we're at it, why are E and B in the bottom of the corner? And for some reason you have the choice between three different exclamation points. Uh, let's move on. Okay, now we're in our bedroom. The beauty of this version is that everything is worth looking at. For example, when you use the radio for the first time, it says, Listen to Dr. Oj Duo's lecture, please. This is Elf Channel. The opposite is DJ Walnut. If we head downstairs, our mom stops us and let us know that Professor Elm, <coughs> I mean Dr. Wu, wants to see us. And let me tell you, it's honestly a really good thing that she told me how to use the phone. I would have never guessed to insert the pin of Zuixi and select the holy figure. Okay, let's head to Dr. Wu and see what's going on. He wants us to apparently look after one of his elves for him. Okay. He then receives a call from the elf grandfather asking us to see something strange. He's unable to go because he's too shy. Obviously, we're going to need a companion for this journey. And we have the excellent choices of... Rided... Brock... And... Weeok? Alright, well, let's take this one and see where it goes. Alright, now we can head out of here and start our journey becoming a Pokemon Master. Or... Elf Master. Oh, and I almost left without his aid giving me his drugs. I think the most notable thing about this game is that when you add something to your bag, the game swears at you. What, you thought I was just gonna put some profanity in this video? I do it for the kids, man. Get your mind out of the gutter. 
I'm really confused as to how the translation got from you put a potion into your bag to drug bag, but I think it's best to just move on out from here. Now you may be asking yourself, what fantastic elf monsters can I catch on my journey? I'm very glad you asked. If you head onto the first route, you have a solid chance of finding wild laps, ouds, and camels. Okay, this is the weirdest one. The Japanese word for rat is rato. How did it become camel through translation? Okay, well, while we're here, let's fight this camel. So, like every other Pokemon game, we have the battle options of fe, bag, elf, and go. We can't catch anything yet, so we'll come back to this whole menu later. Once we reach the elf grandfather's house, he gives us the magical egg. Professor Oak comes a short while after and roughly talks about how he appreciates that you're going on an adventure to research monsters. He then says that both he and Professor Elm are the same researcher. Is this the Pokemon Switch timeline leak that we've been hearing about? To be fair, I've never seen Professor Elm and Oak in the same place at the same time, so I'm all for believing this. After we leave the Elf Grandfather's house, we meet a strange man who stops us and forces us to compete with them after speaking gibberish. Alright, our first Pokemon battle. What moves can we use? So we have the options of Prize and Bite. It's got to the point of this playthrough that I'm honestly not even sure Bite is the actual move. Let's go for it. Uh, no, that's Growl. But at least we made his fork work. Alright, after making his ride it fall, he tells us that he is, in fact, a monster himself, and then dashes off. When we head back to Dr. Wu's laboratory, the police officer asks for the guy's name we fought. Because there are only five character spaces, I thought I'd make the whole situation worse and name him Dr. Wu as well. Now we have a story to tell. Okay, let's begin our journey. Oh no, not you again. Uh. The rest of the game is littered with nonsensical sayings on top of general gameplay, but I have to admit, this is the most dedicated I've been to a Pokemon game in a long, long time. I'm literally checking anything and everything you can interact with and hope that it will say something stupid. Without playing through the whole game, let's go over some of the special artifacts that were hidden in this game. Spearow is named Bird, and Remoraid is named Fish. Whitney only speaks in letters. And after you defeat Bruno, he tells you that you actually lost to him instead. Oddly enough, a lot of Pokemon and characters in the game have multiple names due to bad translation. The Sprout Tower is called the Matapo Tower, Beiming Tower, BM Tower, and Matasumumi Tower on multiple different occasions. Even the mascot of the game isn't safe. Suicune's name switches from Shuijin to Ayan throughout the story, but my favorite is his name when you check the Pokedex. Dawn. Hey, how you doing? My name's Donnie, but my pals call me Don. You trying to catch all the elves? Well, you gotta catch me, tough guy, and let me tell you, I ain't no pushover. If you Google the game's famous quotes, there are endless pages of hidden gems scattered throughout the game. Some of my favorites are a woman telling you not to serve the devil, and a man that tells you to throw the butt casually. Because of the poor translations, the content is endless. On another note, I can only imagine some English reading child purchasing this as their first Pokemon game and never touching another game again because of how confusing this game is to an outsider. Because I've played Generation 2 many, many times, I know exactly what to do. But for a person who has never played this series would have a ridiculously difficult time playing through even for the first few hours. Overall, I think if you haven't played this game, I highly suggest it. I normally would never suggest playing ROMs or emulated versions of a game without owning the physical cartridge, but this game is near impossible to find in the outside world. I even had quite a bit of trouble finding the ROM for this, but if you happen to come across a copy, definitely give it a try. I know I spoiled about the first hour of the game, but keep in mind there are two whole regions of randomness waiting for you. 
Alright, and that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any suggestions for videos or other random games that you'd like me to review, leave them in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a like as we'll be putting out more content soon. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.